Hey guys, since I last spoke to you uh, when I was working on the sand mine Damascus billets, uh, I've since sand mined this one more time and uh, realized I still uh, I still do not have enough uh, steel there. And this time it's the length, not the width. I'm just not going to have enough steel to make the, the knife that my buddy wants. So I'm just going to see what kind of blade I can make with this. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to forge in a tip. Um, that might be kind of dangerous. It might split my welds or, or disrupt the pattern at the tip. I'm at a place where I don't know as if I really care. <laughs> um, I just need to finish this so I can see what I did in my process, uh, how it translated into design on the blade. Um, I definitely know it's not going to be the design I intended, but uh, I'm curious to see what it's going to look like. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Is I gonna fish mouth it? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know if this is going very well. Kind of hard to say. I don't really usually do this. Well, that is interesting. I'll give it that. Um, I think I want to flatten the whole guy down a bit more, though. Still seems a little on the thick side. And uh, I don't think I'll forge in a, some sort of tang. Probably hidden so I can get more length out of the blade. Draw a little piece of that. Oh, 
I think we're actually not looking too terrible. Done for now. I think I like the files better. Starting to look interesting. So I'm not even really sure where I left off on this knife. Um, but anyway, this is my double San Mai that I really only want it to be one San Mai. And I don't know if you can see the pattern in this or, or not, but it actually looks kind of interesting. There's some nice wavy lines there where I've beveled out, and I'm sure they'll get more pronounced. Uh, when I finish the bevel after heat treat, the uh, most significant update, I think, is... I ended up being sandwiched in between the 5160 uh, after uh, you know taking away all the pitting from the forging process and uh, so I actually lost <laughs> um, about 120 layers anyways uh, you know about 60 on each side which brings the layer count about back to what I originally intended which is going to be 123 including the uh, 5160 sandwich on the outside. So uh, I do see the core of the 1095 kind of starting to reveal itself right there. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Well, I'll uh, keep at this and I'll, I'll update you guys when I get done with heat treat. Uh, there's a slight D-lamb right there. I'm hoping that's going to grind out the final product. If it doesn't, well, uh, this blade's going to have an imperfection. It is what it is. Um, so let's get to heat treating. Uh, so when I use a bevel jig, uh, this is what I use. Just an old piece of wood with a beveled angle on it. This angle moves a little bit. C-clamp, a couple of screws to keep the knife in the same position each time. I have different holes depending on which side I'm putting it on. So there's the secret to finally getting the Ricazos lined up. When I get to the final bevel, uh, I use this. If I had a better grinder, then uh, I would probably try to do it all by hand. But I don't, and I got a bad back. It is what it is. This is my favorite and least favorite part of a knife build. It's great because when you get to this stage, you know you're working towards the finishing, the last little bits um, before I go into etch. But what sucks is this is tedious tedious horrible work. Uh, about as unpleasant as it gets.
Okay, let's take an artistic break. It's been a couple of days since, uh, I don't know, I've been working on this blade for several days now. A, a cleanup, a final shaping, a final bevel, and uh, a kind of a, a decent cleanup and sanding and a preliminary just test etch to really get an idea what this pattern is going to look like. And uh, man, it's just, it's just beautiful. I don't know if you can even see it in this light. See if I can get, it, get you to have a really good, a good look. It is beautiful. I love it. I am really, really happy with it. Uh, it worked out pretty well. The uh, 5160 and uh, some of the layers got taken off, most of the 5160. But uh, what's left on here looks really good. Uh, you'll probably see it a little bit better when I do the final etch. Let's see how this goes. Five thirty. I'll check it in about fifteen minutes. Got about what? Ten minutes. Oh man, it's got like weird spotting in there. I don't understand that. Look at that pitting. Man, I do not understand what's happening with this. I don't know if you can even see it in this light, but it's it's pitting the steel. In a way that's very unattractive. So, a lot of work later, I think I've got 99% of the pitting back out of the blade. Problem is, I only used 500 grit this time, like I did for the test etch. Went back to the old tried and true uh, etchant, which is basically a 3 to 1 water to ferric chloride. Uh, I'm almost scared now. That was a lot of work trying to get that stuff back out of there. I'm gonna watch this like a hawk. Alright, so it's been about four minutes, maybe five. I already peeked to see. It doesn't look terrible. Um, I actually wonder if it was the temperature, the temperature of the etchant that was the problem before. Um, because both of those, the coffee was hot, plus I used hot water in the other etchant. Um, this is looking really good. I like that. Um, my concern is it's so aggressive of acid at this uh, 3 to 1 ratio. I'm afraid it's not going to give me the clean lines I'm looking for, but I don't want that bubbly look again. And I did notice that the last two, it bubbled up around the blade. It's not doing that now. So something was chemically happening with the temperature of the mixture in those other ones. That just, uh, it just wasn't good. So, anyway, oh, I'm going to watch this a little more. Like a hawk. Wow, so how about those problems with the etching process? So you start to think you know what you're doing, and that's when stuff happens and you realize you don't know what you're doing. Um, but I'm very satisfied with the outcome after all the challenges and uh, trying it out. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, hopefully you agree. Uh, I finally went ahead and I etched my logo on there. I don't know if it looks quite as good as I'd like it to. Um, you know, it's a cross with a WJ underneath. Uh, you know, it, this, this looks good. This is the best looking blade I've made so far. Uh, I know it hardened up really good. Um, if you guys didn't catch the first video, which was really me pounding on the layers to get this, um, you know, I know not everyone wants to see where your food comes from. Not everyone wants to see all the processes of how the blade is made, but the magic for that pattern came from that first video, the San Mai Damascus attempt. So if you really are curious how that happened, you might want to check that video out. And as always, it seems like I'm running long, so uh, there's going to have to be a third video of me finishing this knife. So stay tuned. I will get on it as I get time, and I will share it with you. All right, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see the things I'm working on. I need encouragement, and that stuff's going to encourage me. Uh, comment below if you have any advice for me or even just any comments about these videos. Um, thanks. Have a great day.